Yo, Gamer Nemi here and welcome to my Lars Alexanderson Hit Guide where I explain to you guys the most optimal and most efficient way to use Lars, his hit abilities whilst he is in hit. As we all know, hit adds so much depth to characters and more so other characters than others so you won't really use hit in the same way with all the characters and that's the whole point of this video. I'll give you guys some tips on like how not to waste hit you know the best times to go into hit and like the most efficient and optimal like i said ways to use you know heat especially with lars that matters a lot with lars as well as usual my guides will be long over 30 minutes maybe at least top so watch them at your own pace use the timestamps provided if you have to rewind pause if you have to and all that jazz so with that said let's get right into it okay so as usual i'm first going to start by explaining how lars's heat mechanic works now uh, disclaimer i have made a two hour long video explaining how every character's hit ability works in this game so if you haven't checked that video please check it out you can always check out lars's section using the timestamps but the sake of this video i'm going to explain his abilities nonetheless okay so there are two main aspects of Lars that change whilst in hit. So the first one revolves around his new stance, which is limited entry. So this dance that he does after certain moves, for example, after down, back, one, three, you can hold down to go into limited entry. Um, you can cancel silent entry into limited entry by holding down as well. So this stance, he has two moves from this stance. So he has the low, this one which is on his minus 12, is a pretty decent low. Then he also has the mid, nice safe mid at minus nine, very, very strong, right? So when Lars goes into hit, both of these moves get enhanced. So just to show you guys, first of all, uh, his limited entry two, normally, right? Just knocks you back or knocks the opponent back, doesn't do that much, right? So when Lars goes into hit, this changes into an instant screw. I miss that. There we go. An instant screw, which is basically a combo now, right? And his law becomes a hell sweep. 35 damage hell sweep. That's only minus 12. So that's pretty freaking strong, right? So yeah, that's the first aspect of Lars's hit abilities. It enhances his limited entry stance, buffing the law and the mid as well. The second aspect of his hit abilities is his new rebellion. This move right here. So this move is full body armor. So let me just show you guys this. Full body armor and leaves Lars at plus five on block. So that's something basic. Boom, boom. And I'm going to hit, then press play. Right. Uh, see that? So he absorbs. He has like hella armor. I was watching hit right hella armor and like i said it leaves you at plus five on block boom right plus five and you can go to as high as i think plus 11 depending on the distance right as you can see this is like plus eight right so yeah it's pretty ridiculous and the range is insane as well as you can see so this also leaves him in silent entry which you guys know is his perhaps strongest stance right so he has a low from this, and he has really, really good mids, right? He has a mid, he also has a mid launcher as well. So yeah, he is a mix-up god when he is in hit. Without a doubt, Lars has one of the strongest hit mechanics in the game, for sure. Probably top 10, right? At least top 10. What best top 5? At least top 10, in my opinion. And what I like about his hit is that it's pretty, pretty straightforward, right? The only difficult part about being about this hit is how to implement it, right? How to get into LE, when to get into LE and utilize both, you know, the enhanced moves, the mid and the high, the mid and the low, and his shoulder. Like, how do you implement all these in a match? And that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so now let's first talk about when to go into hit with Lars. Okay. So in my previous guide, I spoke about Leroy and how you always want to go into hit after your opponent has used, used their hit gauge so that you prevent them as much as you can from regaining their gray health back. So with Lars, that's just screw off. It doesn't really matter when you want to go into hit with Lars because 
like I said, it's just a powered up stance, right? A powered up hit state. LE is powered up and he has a mix up shoulder, right? So you, you can just pop it anytime you want. You force the mix ups, do some damage, and close the set out. It doesn't really matter that much with Lars. Now, of course, ideally, for all the characters in the game, you preferably want to go into hit after your opponent has used their hit gauge because you want by all means like i said to prevent them from gaining their gray health back right ideally for all characters yes this is how you should do it but it shouldn't be like your priority right i'm sure you guys have watched a ton of matches as of now it doesn't really matter when to go into hit class and that's one thing i really like about this character you can just go crazy with all of these strong moves right and if you're going to hit then well oh damn right now you're like super juiced up right so yeah on that aspect again just feel free to go into hit whenever you can all right so now let's first talk about his limited entry whilst in hit right so like i said his low becomes a hell sweep and his mid becomes a launcher so now the most difficult part about this aspect of Lars's hit is the fact that limited entry is not that easy to access right like i said earlier you can go into le from se that's the only way you can manually go into limited entry only from se right like this right so yeah it's not that easy to access so with that said you first want to look at the tools that give you an instant access to le so first moves like down back one three right you can go into le by holding down you have um one four which is high low gives you access to le immediately you have his punish, his 10 frame punisher 2 1, right? It goes into LE as well. Um, you have DE4, right? Goes into LE. You also have outstanding 2 3, goes into LE. Okay, so when you're in hit, try to prioritize using all these moves. Now, you won't get the chance to always get to use them. So, moves like 2 1, for example, outstanding 2 3, these are punishers, right? So, you can't really just throw them out on block. But if you get the chance to land a punish, like a 2-1, that's your opportunity. Because now you've gained access to LE and now you have the pure 50-50 mix-up, right? So in terms of punishers, that's how you want to implement these into your hit game. Into your hit game or like your hit mindset. Try to be, to be smart, right? Maybe you get a low, boom, minus 14. Right, get a punish into LE. Um, sorry, what am I doing? Get a punish into LE, enforce the mix up, right? So, with punishers, that's how you want to use them. People have this misconception that whenever you go into hit, then like the game is yours, the offense is all yours, they can't do anything about it. No. You're strong, yes, but you can still get stepped, you can still get blocked, right? Stuff like that, they can initiate their own hit as well, right? So, as much as you'll be very offensive whilst in hit, you can also be defensive, right? You get a block whilst you're in hit, punish them enforce the mix up right so when it comes to punishers that's how you want to implement your hit especially with 2-1 and or standing 2-3 as well okay uh so now let's talk about a move like down back one three okay so now down back one three into le is not a guaranteed mix up right this is not guaranteed i know we all see we all saw the no b insane match the pre-evil tournament and he was like just spamming this right there's a mind game behind this this is not guaranteed. Now, while it's not guaranteed, like I said, it has a mind game, so it's still something strong you can use. So, let me just explain it. Okay, so down, back, one, three, hold down, right, to LE is minus one, as you can see. So, both of you can still move, even you can still move afterwards, but ideally, it's not your turn, right, because they're minus one. But, like, minus one is not that deep. You can still disrespect your opponent afterwards, you can still move afterwards, so... The bind game behind this is this, right? So if Lars goes for down back 1-3 into outstanding 1, right? So, this is going to beat a down forward 1, as you can see. I'm throwing out down forward 1, which is, which is 13 frames, right? So, this will beat a down forward 1 because it comes out at 12 frames. However, it's going to lose to, to jabs, right? It will lose to jabs. So that's a mix-up game. So now where I'm going with this is his limited entry tool actually goes under jab. So this. Right? Just show you guys. Boom. You see that? It goes under jabs. Right? However, it's going to lose to a down forward one. Right? 
So this is where the mind game comes into play. Now this is all about making the right read. You have to test your opponent. Just throw out down back one three, boom boom, and back up. See how they react. Are they jabbing too much afterwards? Are they down forward warning too much afterwards? So those are the two options that you're looking for, right? If they're down forward warning you a lot, go for outside info, right? Show them that, okay, you still have the plus frames, right? You will beat your down, you will beat their down forward one, right? If they start jabbing, that opens up your opportunity to now go for the mix up, right? Because the low, of course, is a high crash, so you go under jabs, and the high also goes under jabs as well. So that's the mix up behind down back one three, and that's what makes it strong. So you can do stuff like this, for example. Uh, let's see, boom, going to hit, right? Down back one three, down uh, or standing four. If they, if, if you notice that it hits, they, they probably threw out a down forward one, right? So if you, if you notice that they've blocked this, you know, then yeah, they're respecting your down back one three. That opens up your window to go for the AOE mix up. So that's basically how you must implement. Is limited entry from down back one three. Now this also applies to one four. It's the exact same thing, right? This one is a little bit better because it's plus one, right? But it's the same thing, right? Uh, down forward one uh, will still beat the the outstanding the limited entry two, right? So you can check them with outstanding one, outstanding four. Sorry. So just the exact same scenario I gave you guys earlier. This also applies to his uh, DE4 as well. Same scenario as well, like I said, and 1-4 as well. So these are the tools that give you instant access to limited entry. So if you go into hit, right, try to use these tools, right? This as well, 1-4, into mid, right? Are, you, are they down for, down for, are they trying to down forward or not that? Go for outside in four, check them, right? Because at the end of the day, all standing four is only minus four. You can still move, you can still throw out your shoulder afterwards to keep your turn. Like it's ridiculous. I'll get into that later. So the other thing I want to talk about is manually going into limited entry after a hit engager. So for example, like I showed you guys earlier, you can go to dynamic entry, then silent entry, right? By tapping forward, then limited entry or LE by tapping down, right? So trust me when, you, when I tell you guys, people are going to respect you for dashing in their face with Lars because the hit engager is plus 17 and that's a lot, right? And you guys know it's not really advised to disrespect your opponent after a hit engager. Like plus 17 is just too much. So people are going to watch your ass just dash up in their face, right? So you can do that. That's pretty, pretty that, it's strong, right? And again, it's about making reads, testing your opponent, seeing how they react after you like the hit engager. I think respecting you a lot, right? Go for manual he LE into the mix up. And this also applies to like a running three, like I showed you guys earlier, right? Running three, right? Mix up. Even DE3, DE3 takes you into SE, so SE into LE, then you force a mix up, right? This is very, very strong as well. Very, very strong, right? So it's super plus as well. Now there are other moves you can use, the basic stuff like down back two into SE, but this is not guaranteed. Of course, this can be interrupted. Or sending two can be interrupted, right? It's like it's generic stuff to go into SE can be interrupted. So the, the, the tools I'm showing you are the most effective and the most efficient in my opinion. Choose those instead. So again, guys, for his limited entry stance, right? Use the moves that have easy access to LE. Down back 1 3, 1 4, DE 4, 2 1 when you get a punish, or something 2 3 when you get a punish into LE mix ups. That's the whole idea. Don't waste your hit, and I'll talk about this in a different section by doing something like down back 2 into SE then LE because this can be hella interrupted and very, be very, very punishable, but I'll talk about that later. So for, for LE guys, hit LE mix ups, that's basically how you want to implement this in your gameplay with our boy. Larzu. Alright, so now let's talk about Lars' other aspect of his hit. Like I explained earlier, his rebellion. Full body armor shoulder. Now this move is hella good, like I showed you guys earlier. But people act as though this move is invincible. And that's what I really want to talk about. 
Because at the end of the day, the way to use this move is pretty straightforward, right? It leaves you in SE for guaranteed mix-up, very, very basic, very, very easy to implement. But now, one of the things that I don't really like about Lars players is they tend to use Rebellion more so than they, than they do his, his buffed up LE, right? His Rebellion is strong, don't get me wrong, but firstly, this takes up a huge chunk of hit gauge, as you can see. Manual hit, I can only get two dashes. Then from a hit engager, I can only get three dashes. So one, two, and three, right? Then again, in a match, you're going to have downtime, right? You won't always be in your opponent's face. So at maximum, maybe you can get like two or three moves off, right? So the reason why I say you don't really have to spam this move. First, like I say, it takes up a huge chunk of the hit gauge. And secondly, this move is very good defensively, right? I think this move was given to us to disrespect frames a lot and just get in. Not just throwing it like, let's say, I've seen last player do something like this, right? Now this is supposed to be in how to not waste your hit gauge section, but I'll still talk about it regardless. I've seen last players do this, for example, running three, right? Into shoulder, right? You are already plus, you're already plus six. So why the hell would you go plus six? and then go for another plus five move at the cost of a hit gauge, right? It's not worth it. You're wasting your hit gauge, so don't do this. It's not really worth it, right? You're better off if you land the running three, right? Just go for another mix-up, just go for a low. At the end of the day, if you go for down back one three, you're putting yourself in another situation where you can use your LE, your buffed up LE, right? So that's one way people waste Lazarus hit with Rebellion. And I don't like it. If you do this, just do don't, bro. Like, just stop. Stop it, right? Stop it. It's not really worth it. So, when I say this move is meant to disrespect frames, I mean defensively and offensively as well. So, for example, let's say Lars does uh, Arthur in 4, right? Uh, or I do Arthur in 4, for example. So, let me say... Okay, so, uh, record, going to hit, right? Arthur in 4, into Rebellion, right? So, what's that in for? Like I showed you guys earlier, is minus four. So ideally, it has to be my turn, right? As, a, as an opponent. They can still move. They can still move afterwards. They can still do some stuff to challenge. But ideally, it's minus, so they have to respect. But having rebellion and an armored move, you can do stuff like this, right? To like stop them from uh, basically stealing your turn from you, right? So, right, something like this, right? And ideally, you land it on hit, you land it on block, it does not matter. You still get the mix up overall. Right? So, another example is stuff like down two, right? Uh, down two into rebellion, right? Down two is zero, so it's neutral. Or also, need for trade. So, if you don't want to trade and you want to keep your turn, you can do rebellion into instant mix up. So, that's the idea behind how you must implement rebellion. Even defensively, for example, let's say a last is in your face, right? Does something like. Um, uh, let's say, let's say, will this work? Um, I shouldn't even go into what am I doing? Uh, record again, yes. Uh, yeah, something like this, right? So, record this movement, yes. Uh, going to hit, right? You see that, right? I get you respect frames, plus frames, right? Oh, I was not in hit, I was not in hit, sorry about that, guys, right? I'm stealing my turn back. Like, I'm like, screw your plus frames, bro. Hold my rebellion. Hold my plus frames. Eat this freaking mix up. That's the idea behind rebellion. Again, rebellion takes up so much of a hit gauge, right? So, the point if you just throw it out randomly, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's better used to stop a mix up, bro. A thing is in your face. Back three, back three, back three. You're in hit. Throw out that hit. Throw out that shoulder. Throw out that armored move, right? So, that's the idea behind how you must choose Rebellion or the Hit. And one last thing I want to talk about is Rebellion is not invincible. It's an armored move. So being an armored move, of course, it's going to lose to grabs and lows. So for example, okay, as you can see, it loses to grabs and it's unbreakable, right? And lows are going to punish you as well, right? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So, guys, again, don't just spam rebellion. 
don't just spam it you're wasting a hit i'll talk about this again in the don't waste your hit section but just for the sake of it guys that's not how you must use rebellion if you're plus already uh let's see uh if you're plus already something like for example uh down back one plus two right yeah in hit you do this you're plus one then you go for a shoulder again like it's not worth it you're already plus take that plus and use it for something else like a two one maybe to put yourself into le which you can then use your le mix-ups again right because you're plus one so yeah that's the idea behind rebellion whilst in heat how not to waste your heat with larzu now this one is very important with lars because dude like lars heat is so strong like i said earlier so you want to make you want to take advantage of that shit like it's so good man it's so good so try your best to not waste your hit gauge and this is what i want to discuss in this section firstly manual hit with lars try your best to avoid manual hit now this one is difficult because I know sometimes in the game, offense is just like offense in this game is ridiculous, right? And hit burst is one of the full is a few good defensive tools we have in this game. So again, I won't blame you. I won't hold anything against you if you just use your manual hit with Lars because yeah, it's it's difficult. It's difficult, I know. But like I said, his hit his hit is one of the best in the game, and that LE man, that LE, this is just too strong. So as you can see, when you're in LE and you go into manual hit, right, you can only get at least two mix-ups maximum before you run out, right? So you want to maximize this by always going into hit through the use of a hit engager, right? A hit engager will give you full bar, the entire hit gauge, right? So overall, you will get at least three mix-ups, right? One, two, three. Which is pretty good it's pretty good mind you one of these for the law does 35 damage 35 you land two of these that's 70 damage right in the launcher right it does hella damage and it has war carry right 54 can get you like 70 with the war right so you want to try by all means to maximize Lars's hit gauge by going into hit the use of a hit engager there are some characters that don't really care that much about hit for example uh let's say lee i don't think lee really re needs hit to that extent because you do have the just frames already right but with lars you just have to make sure at least try your best to go into hit to the use of a hit engager but like i said it's difficult i know but like just try your best because even the rebellion like i showed you guys earlier you can only get two uh through manual hit but like through a hit engager, you get at least three shoulders, which gives at least more opportunities to disrespect frames and go for the guaranteed mix-up on block. Okay, so that's one aspect of how you don't want to waste hit with Lars or want to use the most out of his hit. Secondly, I've seen Lars players do this, right? Rebellion into, into LE mix-up. This is horrible. This is horrible. Right, you only, only, you only get one mix-up at the cost of basically your entire hit gauge, or at least two parts of the hit gauge, right? One and two. And your hit gauge is and your hit gauge is done. Like, was it worth it for 35 damage? No. No, it's not. So try your best to use when you commit to using rebellion, the shoulder, try your best to use the SE mix-up. They are still strong, right? You have a launcher from this. SE3 and you have a law. Right? So try to use that as a base mix-up, right? That's all. If you if you decide to cancel, for example, right? If you decide to cancel, it's better off you cancel into other moves that don't take up a hit. For example, stuff like this, right? Or if you want, you can do stuff like uh, uh cancel into the launcher, right? You're better off doing that than using two-thirds of your hit of your hit gauge by going into Rebellion, then uh, limited entry and spending your hit both times. It's not worth it, guys. Please avoid that. I had the mistake of doing that at the beginning of this game. I did know better as well. So I'm sharing this knowledge with you. It's just not worth it. Don't try to use, you know, both mix-ups in tandem, right? The shoulder into LE. Don't do that. It's horrible. Again, 
I don't advise you to do that. Use them separately. This is what makes Lars the heat gauge pretty scary and very, very strong as well. Okay, so now this is kind of like a special special section. Uh, I didn't really want to add, I didn't make a separate video for this, but I'll just add it just to give you guys some ideas. So now what this session is all about is some good setups on how to implement your mix-ups whilst in heat. And this applies mostly for his uh, LE mix-ups, right? His, um, of course, the mid and the low. Uh, most of this is like through Oki, right? After a combo. So something like this, for example. Um, okay, he's on block. Sorry about that. Uh, 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 normal B and B last combo. Boom, going to hit. Uh, uh, uh. All right. Oki, boom, boom, into the mix-up, right? So this is kind of the idea that you must implement into your Oki when you're in hit with Lars. So Lars's basic Oki is something like this. That's something basic. I won't do like a full combo. Okay, let's, let's just do this, right? So something like this, right? And then you go for like a mid to pick them up on the ground. If they, st they stay laying on the ground, right? Um, if, they, if they wake up, you can go for like a, a low, right? Uh, if they take, um, what am I doing? Um, if they take, you can go for this as well. Then dash forward into DE3, right? So just something like this again. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. That flips, them over, that flips them over on the ground. So, you see, his OK is pretty strong to the point that when your opponent gets up from the ground, they will tend to block immediately to get the mix-up. So, that's what makes it strong, the stance position. And the setup I showed you guys is like really good tracking, so you don't even worry about getting stepped. So, so let me just record the CPU to do the exact same combo I showed you guys earlier. So, something like this. Okay, so I'll take row, then I'll side, I'll take row right, right when I get up. We try to side step, right? Take row, step, 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 look at that, right? 360 degrees tracking. And this is for both the low and the mid, right? So yeah, it's pretty strong. And I'm just giving you guys some ideas, right? I will make a separate guide for like okay setups with heat, so don't you worry about that. But I just wanted to give you guys a brief, you know, summary and just like open up your mind a bit. Okay, so just like the previous section, I'm giving you guys some okay setup, so like some okay things you can try to mess around with. Now, this is different because this is at the wall, but the idea is the same. So just something like this, for example, things I love to do, let's say wall splat, back one three, third forward one, if they take, right? So things like that, if you want like instant um, access to uh, LE, you can do something like this, for example. Um, uh, 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 instant access, right? Then go for the law. Now this all depends if they take or they stay on the ground. Of course, you can mix them up if they stay on the ground by like cancelling. You can cancel, right? Do a standing one. A standing one hits grounded. So basic examples, guys, on what you want to do, right? What the hell? Is that a bug? Yeah, that's basic stuff, guys open up your mind right but this is just some ideas to give you but i will have a guide like i said so yeah look forward to that boys okay so there you have it my boys um ways in which you can implement lars's heat right uh pretty pretty strong heat as i said earlier one of the best in the game man i can feel the difference when i'm playing steve leroy then i switch to my boy like dude this man is cooking in this game he is pretty pretty strong right so as usual guys, please let me know what you think of the video. Give me some feedback on how my guides can be better. What do you want to see next? All those questions can be answered. Just leave your questions in the comment section below. If you're thinking of picking up Lars, I did an introduction guide explaining the basics of what this character does, his traits, his weaknesses. So check that out if you want to pick up my boy. So GG my boys, take care.